Hey YouTube, Jim here at Team Aquatics. Just wanted to give you guys a uh, little fish video for Thursday. Uh, I had the day off today and um, I'm also using a new phone that uh, that I got. It's the uh, Galaxy S6 and um, it's the Edge. I'm still uh, getting used to it but um, I'm an Android guy anyway and not a whole lot different from the HTC M8 that I had before this one, but I did want to throw a video out there just to keep everybody keep everybody up to date with what's going on with my tanks. This is uh, obviously the Malawi tank. Um, looks really good right now, pretty clear. Sorry about the glare; it's still light out. It's uh, it's around seven o'clock in Massachusetts and thank God summer is finally coming we got killed this uh, this winter it's just been horrible so but I didn't want to uh, see how the the quality the video quality was and it looks really good on my phone right now as I'm kind of scanning across the screen hopefully it uh, it comes out really nice when I upload it <clears throat> but yeah um, you can see uh, all the fish are doing really really well um, I just threw some food in there so you can see some, you might see some poop and some other crap floating around. Oh, the wind is knocking the doors here. Let me shut this door. There. And um, yeah, so fish are doing really well. Uh, you know, uh, I posted in my last video that I pulled my, um, my two Venustas. It was just, uh, it was really crazy with them. They were really beating the heck out of, uh, out of everybody in there. But since I pulled them, um, you know, the this, this standard chases going on and whatnot, but uh, for the most part, the fish, they all pretty, pretty much get along, and um, no one's getting really tuned up too bad. It seems like I, I did a water change yesterday, a pretty good one, about 30% or so, and I do... If anyone's curious about how frequently I do water changes, I usually do a water change a week in both of my tanks. My my front tank, I usually do about 15%. I try to limit it to about 15% because I remember reading somewhere that um, fronts really don't like the massive water changes. And because my pH out of the tap is right around 7.3, 7.4, and I do use, I think I've mentioned before too, I do use the Seachem Malawi buffer in my Malawi tank and the tang, the Tanganyika buffer in the Tang tank. And um, it really does a good job at buffering my water for me. I do have, um, I do have uh, the Rift Lake um, substrate in here that's, if you look really closely, I don't know how detailed it can get or what you can see, but... There's some rocks and there's some crushed coral and some seashells in there to kind of harden the water a little bit. But yeah, for the most part, this tank here can handle up to a 50% or more water change. These fish are pretty pretty sturdy. They don't uh, they don't react negatively to massive water changes. But um, my other tank, I just I, I don't want to risk it. I've got um, I've got the new babies in there and. Uh, and yeah, so I, I got the babies. I, I think I have 12, 12 Katoomba Purple babies. I have one that survived from the first batch of six, where you all know if you followed my uh, feed, I lost uh, four of the six that I ordered, and then one more um, I lost probably after about a month. One of them survived. He's probably the largest of the Katoomba Purple that I have in the tank. And I have one MOBA um, in there as well. That's uh, the largest fish in the tank, but he's probably only about three and a half inches himself. So I'll pause right here and then resume on the front tank. But let me just give you guys kind of a wide shot of the 125 Malawi tank. So you can kind of see how big the fish are getting. And even with the Mbuna in here, uh, I'm not having <clears throat> I'm not having issues that people, you know, about mixing the Mbuna with the haps and whatnot. Everyone seems to just be kind of doing their thing, you know, swimming around, doing their thing. But yeah, look at that red zebra, my gosh.
It's huge. Beautiful fish, too. Let me get in there. Yeah, that zebra's gorgeous. I mean, the scales, everything is just beautiful on that fish. This is the otter point. Yeah, everyone's really doing great. The um, the Hong the Hongai or Hong Hongai or however you pronounce the red top. Look at the look at the neon coloration of that dorsal fin on that guy. Let's bring him to flare up a little bit. Yep. Jeez, it just. Yeah, I can't. You can't walk by a Malawi tank that's got a ton of fish in it. You can't walk by without just stopping and. You know, taking it, it's just crazy. Crazy. There's the turquoise hat, the, the marginatus. Where is he? I lost him. He's in there, right there. Just a beautiful hat. The rusty. No worse for the wear. A little nip in his tail fin there, but he's, he's doing all right. Everyone's doing okay. Loving it. Um, so we can get this focus adjusted here on the uh, the front tank. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. I can't remember how big they were the last time I uh, I filmed this tank, but as you can see, they are they're growing. There's no doubt that they are growing. And um, you know, I remember reading an article. You know, ultimately, I think for a frontosa in this tank, I, I really want to keep it to maybe two males and maybe six females if possible um, not really sure you know how it'll be at that population but um, right now I've got a ton of fish but I remember reading an article about sexing frontosa and how difficult it was and basically said you know get about a dozen fry and um, and as they grow pull the fastest growing fish out of the aquarium and those are your males more than likely and uh, that way if you ever wanted to breed them you know you uh, you get all your males out of there so you're left with a tank full of beautiful females and um, then order yourself a male from a different bre from a different uh, group breeding group so that you're not cr you know interbreeding I gotta pause for a second because I'm gonna I'm about to sneeze so yeah so you're supposed to pull pull the fish, and then you're left with nothing but females. And the whole idea of it was allegedly to uh, to prevent interbreeding, you know, with um, the same same you know hatch. And I get that. I was actually talking to a um, a local uh, a local guy who's a, somewhat of an expert on Africans, and these are all F1 uh, from the Frontosa factory. These are all F1 uh, Katumba purples. And, um, you know, I, I'm really not, I'm not looking to breed them and, uh, or the hassle of breeding them. If they breed, so be it. Uh, I don't really care about, uh, about them breeding within the same gene line because um, the guy I was talking to said there's not a whole lot to worry about when you're dealing with F1s, which are really one removed, one generation removed from wild. So the parents of F1s are both wild caught, that their genes are very pure and that an F2, um, you're not going to have that many, um, uh, that many problems uh, with F2s. So whatever, it is what it is. I'm not looking to breed them anyway. So they're just beautiful fish, and, uh, and I'm really loving them. Uh, that's a wild-caught calvis that I picked up at that pet store, um, local pet store. He gets great fish. Let me see if I can focus on him. He gets great fish in occasionally, and he, he, if, he find, if he sees unusual fish available, he pulls them and, and gets them. They don't last long, but uh, he's, still, he's still really young, but he's just gorgeous. But he's a wild caught and really pretty, really pretty fish. And so I've got some, um, <clears throat> some blue orchid sips in there. Um, and obviously some uh, lilupis that are in there as well. Uh, they could get picked off. Um, who knows later? But I just needed to. I'm, I'm you know typical fish keeper. I just I need to have something going on in my tank. I can't just 
have you know four or five fish or a dozen baby one inch fry in a 150. So it is what it is. Everyone's doing great, and uh, as you can see, they're all growing. So like if you like it, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I try to post pretty regular updates of what I'm doing here. Um, oh yeah, those who are watching, I did have three common frontosa in here at one point. I actually sold them back to a pet store, the local pet store, and uh, he took them happily. And uh, I think he's already sold two of them um, out of the store already. So I'm a big proponent of rehoming fish. Uh, I, I don't like to, <clears throat> I don't like to to kill fish or cull them back that way if they're good and they're uh, from a and they're a decent fish. I like to, to, you know, even give them back to a pet store rather, you know, if they're not willing to buy them, if they'll take them and try to rehome them, um, then I'm all for that. Uh, these are great fish. And Frontosa are really uh, kind of unique and not all that easy to find. You won't find them typically at a Petco or a, uh, a big box store. And it's really the local the local fish stores that have, uh, have them. And I'm all for uh, giving back to them because I'm, Kind of old school. I used to love going to the local local fish stores and just looking at all the unusual fish they had. And I'm sure most of the people watching watching right now are the same way. And some of the big boxes are kind of driving them away, driving them out of business. And so I'll pay a little extra to, to do business at a big box store if they get fish. If they they usually have nice fish and they get them in and they're uh, knowledgeable people. And once you start building a rapport with them, then uh, they take care of you. So. Oh yeah, I got rid of the PVC too. If you've been watching, I put some uh, some cichlid rock in there just to give the little guys some some places to hide. But they're not really using them now. You can see they're just out and about. No one's bothering them, so I'll be able to pull those at some point. But they actually look pretty decent. They they look pretty natural in there with the other rocks that are in the tank. So again, uh, like if you like, uh, comment if you feel like it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't. See you soon.